Hello, everyone. I'm Marty Murray, Chief Curriculum Officer with Target Test Prep. Today, we're going to talk with Anna Moylan. It's going to be a pretty exciting interview. I don't know if you saw the the uh, the promotion for this video, but she did an amazing thing. We're all going to learn from. She achieved a 300 point score increase. And because with achieving score increases is what we're all about here. And it's definitely going to have some cool stuff to tell us today. How's everything, Anna? Welcome. Everything. Yes, everything's going well. I got into my dream school. Life is great now. So I'm, you know, excited to share the learnings, the insights, how it happened. So yeah. And we're excited to hear it. It's going to be cool. Uh, maybe you can start by telling us a bit about yourself. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Anna Moylan. Um, I'm a 26-year-old living in Chicago, Illinois. Um, so uh, when I was younger, my dream school was always to attend Northwestern University. Um, and so I, these past two years, have um, worked diligently, um, you know, pr preparing for that kind of goal. Um, and yeah, I uh, was accepted into Kellogg on March 28th of this year, and I'll be attending their program um, coming up um, in June, actually, the one-year program. Um, personally, I enjoy um, yoga, fitness, um, you know, design. I enjoy, um, you know, really just, you know, uh, being with my friends in the city, all of that. And career-wise, um, I enjoy business, technology, marketing, strategy, and strategy. Um, and the intersection of all that right now finds me at Deloitte Consulting, um, where I am in their customer and marketing practice um, and work for, um, you know, just consulting on some of the major clients that we have there. So that's okay. me. Excellent. So all pretty interesting. So now you, at some point in this, you decided to take the GMAT. You, I guess you wanted to go to Kellogg. So how did that all begin? Yes. So uh, since literally since I was young, I always wanted to go to Northwestern. Um, didn't work out undergrad. Um, I've always been someone who finds standardized testing difficult, but I, um, you know, didn't go there for undergrad, ended up going to the Indiana University Kelly School of Business, which I loved, amazing experience. Um, and so I still had in the back of my head, I really want to go to Northwestern and I really would love an MBA. Uh, that was so great. I would love to get an MBA. Um, and so around two years ago, I said, okay, you know what, eventually I want this to be a reality. Um, and so I started, you know, passively thinking about the GMAT, uh, passively studying, but I didn't really start actively studying until March, 2022. Okay. And then I studied for 10 months straight. Um, and I was able to see the kind of score improvements that I wanted to see. Um, and I then, you know, <clears throat> landed on, on my final score. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So you talk about you achieve your score increase. And you also said you're not that good at standardized. Or you didn't think you were that good at standardized tests. I'm not sure if I really believe in this idea of not being good at standardized tests, if you see what I mean. But uh, so, but okay. So you, you, you had it, you wanted to go to Kellogg. It's time to take the GMAT. Did you take an initial practice test or anything? Like how did your prep begin? I mean, I know you said you studied sort of passively, but at some point, I guess you took a baseline test. Yes. So um, when I started was passively studying, I took my first test um, and I had an initial score of 360. Um, so I started out and I actually scored in the zeroth percentile in math, in quant, um, which is <laughs> insane. I can, wow. I was, I'm so embarrassed to even say that. But, but why? Think, but anyway, okay, fine. <laughs> it, just goes, it just goes to show, honestly, like how the how good the improvement was that I could then you know get where I I landed which was my final score of a 660. So I um yeah so I started with that initial score of 360 and then I got all the way up to a 660 and I was ecstatic to get that 660. Yeah okay so you started at 360 you got to 660 but there must have been quite a story in between those two scores right? Yes. So you started prepping, you said passively. Uh, did you get any uh, results from that? Like what happened there? Yeah, so I realized something. Um, I have really bad testing anxiety. 
And so for me to go into a test like the GMAT, a very difficult test, I had to have, I had to have confidence. Um, and the only way to have confidence for someone like me is to know every type of question, question content, um, formulas, grammatical rules. Like the, I was the only way I was going to be able to actually go in and feel good about that test. Um, and so the way to do that is I had to start at the beginning. I had to, you know, I had to go step by step and learn everything there was to learn on a test like that. And what's so unique about Target Test Prep and why I'm here and why I, you know, think they're amazing is because they have really gone through just from the beginning, from square one, from zeroth percentile in quant to figuring out what is on this test. Um, and right. so, yeah, so that's why I just started from the beginning with Target Test Prep because I was passively studying, but it was all over the place where Target Test Prep, when I started with them, it's square one. Here's what you need to know in this order. And if you do this, you're going to have testing confidence. So by the time I actually took that that final test, that official score, and I had that 660, I had confidence because I had learned every detail. So this is a key. I think this is one of the key takeaways here for a lot of people, because a lot of people come into the test with the two two of the things you talk about going on. One is they think they're not good at standardized tests, That's right. right? Like, oh, I'm not good at standardized tests. And the other one is they want, they're just not confident, you know, for that reason and for others, we all need to be confident. So many of us test anxiety. So this idea that you were going to just say, look, and this is a great formula. If I know everything, mm -hmm. I have to do okay on this test. Yeah. And you I'm going to be confident, right? Right. And it's going to become a virtuous cycle. I kind of had a sort of similar experience. Like yeah. I'm looking at this test because I hadn't prepared that hard for standardized tests before this for the GMAT. I said, well, how am I going to make my score go? And then you start realizing, well, just learn one thing. I'm going to do better. Yeah. If I learn two things, I can do that much better. And if I learn everything, well, then I'm going to be looking good, right? So, I mean, this is a formula anybody can use. So, look, Anna started off at 360, you know, but okay. She started at 360, but she, had, she decided, look, this is a straightforward formula. Yeah. If I just learn enough, my score has to go up. Okay, so then you, you signed up for Target Test Prep. So what did you find in there? Like, you know, how did things go at that point? Like, did it, you know, did you feel like you were going to just cruise through this thing? What, what features did you see? Like, what did you think at that point? Okay, so yeah, I signed up March 1st, like 2022. I opened up Target Test Prep. I had a panic attack because there is so much in there. They have, you guys have like literally kudos to you guys. You have put everything you need to know into that software. So I, I open it up and I, I see this like study plan, which I'll talk about that in a minute, but I see this study plan and it has all this ahead of me. So I first, I start and I realize, and I want to share a quote. I realized, I, I thought about this quote I heard in the past and it was the only, when you're faced with an impossible task, one like eating an elephant, so eating an elephant might seem like an impossible task or, you know, 10 months of GMAT prep or less if you're faster might seem like an impossible task. But the yeah. only way to accomplish a, an impossible task is one step at a time, one bite at a time. And so, I, and so I look at this impossible task in front of me trying to get the score up, which is going to be hard. Yeah. And I, just, I, I say, OK, we're going to just get started. And the best part about Target Test Prep, in my view, is the study plan, the calendar. So they have this like really great software, guys, that literally just shows you a calendar and it automatically for you, like just calculates, here's everything you need to know. Here's, you put in how much time per day you want to study, you know, when you want your final date to be of your official test. And the study plan magically, automation, but magically, creates a study plan for you. And so each day I had a, a bite. I had a bite of my elephant each day. I took and I did my, you know, my, you know, geometries later, but I did like my geometry for the day, or I did my, you know, n property of numbers. You'd be surprised. I did not know my properties of numbers. Like you'd be, you just, you do each thing each day. And if you do that, you're good. Just so that's all it took. 
you, you were totally confident the whole time. You never, like every day was just perfect, right? From then on? No, every day was definitely not perfect. So it's not easy, guys. Like if it was easy, then everyone who bought a GMAT book would be going to their dream school. It's not easy. It's so hard, actually, like really hard. I would have to wake up at, you know, five or six in the morning sometimes to study for an hour or two before work. Then I would have to study after work, which is always hard. Um, Scott, in one of his sessions, said try to do before because your mind's fresh. But um, so before work, you would have to study. I would study. And then on the weekends, I would have to go and study for eight hours on Saturdays and Sundays. Like, it's not going to be the most fun thing you've ever done. Definitely not. Like, it's going to be really hard. And it was really hard for me. Like, there were times where I was sitting studying alone. I'm such a social person. And so I was sitting studying alone, and I was for sure not happy. Like, I was sad. Like, it's, 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 it's hard to, you know, say you're going to go for a goal. But if you do it, you know, it's temporary pain for what I think is, is life on, you know, an extensive of accomplishment. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and you had, I mean, you, you had been looking at Northwestern since you were like young, right? Yeah. I mean, this was, so your goal was major. Would you say that helped? I mean. It's good to have a goal in your mind. You know, why do you want to do this? Like, I know my, like, like I know, I knew I needed and I wanted to be at accomplish that goal, which is Northwestern. I've always, I didn't apply to other schools. It was do or die for me right. for Northwestern. You should apply to wow. other schools. But, uh. Yeah, so it's, it's, I, I just, I, I think that it's having that goal in your mind. Why do you want to get an MBA? Why do you want to take the GMAT? Because if you have that, then it's, it's easy to persevere um, because you have something that you're working towards. So just have a goal, know why you want to take the GMAT. And then when you wake up at 5 a.m. to study a, you know, sentence structure question, you'll, you have a purpose. If you don't have a purpose, then it's going to be harder for you to open up the that you don't have any books because it's online. But it's going to be harder for right. you to open target test prep or whatever because you you don't have your goal. You ought to have a goal. Yeah. So is there anything else you needed? Like, how did you how many hours did you spend? Would you say? Oh, yeah. So um, and for me, I mean, you guys might be able to go through it a ton faster than I did, but I'm yeah. I'm kind of slow and methodical in the way that I study, which I read every sentence that you guys wrote at Target Test Prep. Like I went through every single sentence, read everything. So for me, it took 700 hours. So to say right. that, it might scare some of you guys, but it's okay because if you break it up, those 700 hours fly by. And they would have flown flown by anyway because of time. So just well, you know. well, sure. And the other thing is, I mean, you were starting at three sixty. Yes. Right. And you had a so you and you wanted to get up much higher. So you know, the truth of the matter is, the, the prep takes what it takes. You know, and I think that part of it is realizing that yeah. that if you want to go up three hundred points or more, it's going to take out. You know, if you only have to oh. increase your score by a hundred points. And you start 100 points from your score goal, you know, you could use whatever course. It's not going to take you as long as it would if you have to increase your score by 300 points. So if look, if you get into this, because this I'm sure that people watching this are people. Some of you do want to increase your score by 200, 300 points. I mean, it's going to take what it takes for you. Right. And, it, you know, you can't compare yourself to other people and say, oh, I start, you know, I started here. I can't believe this person scored 700 plus was studying for two weeks doesn't matter, right? What matters is, look, whatever it takes, whatever is between you and your goal, you find the time, you make the hours, you get up early in the morning like Anna did, and you make it happen, whatever it takes, right? I mean, how do you, you know, so how do you, is there anything else you did to stay motivated for those uh, 700 hours, Anna? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, try to have some semblance of a normal routine, um, because then you can still, you know, when if you can still, you know, study in the mornings on the weekends, and then see your friends at night, it'll help, you know, you keep pushing. Um, but I think just to st I stayed motivated by following my study plan, small rewards here and there. If I got through all of geometry, I would buy myself a cute pair of shoes, you know, yeah. like you got to have little rewards along the way and yes. you have to. And don't get sad if you can't get past a certain score. I was in the 500s for so long, and I was like, oh, 
people's starting scores are in the 500s. And right. I couldn't get past the 500s. And I got like, then I, when I finally did get past the 500s, I was in the 600s. That was a great feeling. Like, and I know for some of you, you're, 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 you know, you already maybe are higher or whatever, but it's not about that. It's about just score improvement. It's, can I personally get better? So don't get all tied up in the 700 club. Like just, just focus on like internally trying to get better. And I think that, you know, that's kind of what kept me going. That's a really interesting thought. You know, I actually, I had a student once and he started at like maybe the upper 400s and now he's at like 620. And I get this email and he said, I'm so depressed. I said, what are you depressed about? He said, look, I've been spending all this time and I'm only at 620. I said, wait a minute, your, your scores improved by like 100 something points or it. I think you have to have that attitude, right? That mm-hmm. as long as you're, or as long as you're making progress, learning, even if your score, your practice test scores aren't going up, or, or you know, you, I don't know, you don't see discernible progress in your practice test, but you're maybe learning a new co- uh, concept, or uh, get your practice accuracies going up a little bit. You're making progress, right? And you just look at that, no matter what it is. You know, maybe you didn't know how to do combinations two days ago, and now you do. Well, you know, you've just made some progress. So whatever it is for you, as long as you're making progress, you're looking good, you know? And just don't get discouraged. I could have stopped in 2022, in September 2022. I could have stopped, you know, whenever. But if you stop, then you, you're you losing out on your goal. Like, just keep going. For me, it was so hard. I would start doing really bad, and then i go, oh, I'm done with this, F this, whatever. But you just, you got to just keep going. Like, keep trying. You know, don't let the the times your score goes a little bit this way to like stop you, like just, just keep going. And, and also like, this sounds kind of cheesy, but like knowing the content in the GMAT, you, yes, you may not use it like 10 years down the line, but it makes you sharper. I noticed that I was by dedicating myself to a goal. I was actually making my mind sharper at work. Uh, Math was, I can, you know, more quickly do math on, on calls, or I can more quickly, you know, think, my emails, even my emails I'm writing it at work are better because they have correct sentence structure. Just even if you might not see like, you know, improvements right away, it's small, it's gradual. It happens over time and it kind of transcends even just the test. So. Yeah, that's really interesting. It does transcend the test. I find that I'm sharper too, you know, just so many things, whether I'm deciding, uh, you know, making a management decision or, or just assessing something or, Man, everything, you're just sharper because you, you're thinking in such detailed ways and such logical ways, whether it's from the quant or the critical reasoning or the data sufficiency that, you know, kind of, well, do I have enough resources to make this decision? So you're really sharpening yourself up so you're not wasting your time preparing at all. Now, as far as, so you said you were stuck in the 500s. Do you recall what got you out of the 500s specifically? I mean, if you don't, fine, but I'm curious because sometimes, you know, that could be interesting to because a lot of people do plateau. Yes. Um, I think, honestly, what gets you out of it is you have to start feeling confident doing harder problems. Like I, so I was like feeling not even confident with like some lower level problems. But once you start like acing the lower level problems, then you're like, okay, we can start adding on more and more. And I find by the end, I would like be like, okay, I want to find a harder problem. Or I want to take, I would re- go it back. So when I would do the early chapters, the um, in the uh, the quizzes at the end and stuff, I would bomb all of the harder problems. So I would, after my you know um, study plan actions for the day, I would go back to the problems in the harder ones and I would redo them, so that I could try to figure out how to get those. So it's kind of like though you're following the study plan go back and kind of work on the ones that you are struggling, like the sections you're struggling with. Like some stuff like, um, like stats was hard for me. Um, Reading comprehension was hard for me. Go, I would go back and I'd focus on those. And by focusing on the areas that you're really bad at, you can actually, then that's how I was making those jumps out of 500 and I was in the 600s. So so Uh, interesting. Yeah. So basically it sounds like, Diving into areas of weakness is what drove it up. Like yes. whether it was the harder questions or the harder topics, you're like, look, this is where I'm weak, you know? And that, that's it. There's another key takeaway for everybody. 
it's so easy to get comfortable with certain topics or certain questions, you know, and, oh, I'm doing great on the easy and mediums, you know, so I don't even, I don't want to worry about these hards too much or like I'm doing great in critical reasoning. So reading comprehension, uh, I don't want to go there. You know, you got to dive into those weak, ter- weak areas. That's when you're driving your score up, right? So there's another key takeaway. If you're stuck, you know, look at what's not working. And, exactly. and but also you were talking about the little wins, then add things to your win list. Like, okay, wait, I learned this new, like in the course, me personally, something that really helped me that, that is in the course is like in the primary purpose RC questions, for whatever reason, those would drive me crazy. And then once I learned like the keywords and what to look for in the structure, the passage, you can bring that primary purpose right into focus. So if you're having trouble with something like that, there's got to be a lever you can pull. There's got to be something. Okay. You know, if I, there's got to be something I can do here and you'll find it. And you're, oh my gosh. Like these keywords are bringing the passage into focus and learning how to see the structure. All of a sudden primary purpose questions are easy. Oh man, I did it. You know? Exactly. And it, it might take, so it might take a second to click for me. Clicks take a lot longer than other people. I feel like. I don't know. You know, Just, you keep saying that. I mean, but that's one thing that I really wonder if you could even c- continue working on. Maybe that's your weak area. Yeah. Like, saying, think- you know, these clicks, who knows? They, I remember spending, like, I would look at one question and I wouldn't even know the answer. And I would still look at it for a couple hours. And I'm like, yeah. it takes- I know how the math, they did the math, but I don't know how this question works. You know, and, mm-hmm. I, you know, who... So who knows whose clicks take long for who? I'm sure everybody has things you just stare, sit there and stare at. So many people I've talked to have said, I'm practically embarrassed by my accuracy on X, Y, Z. You know, mm-hmm. I'm practically embarrassed by this. I'm practically embarrassed by how long this took me to learn. I'm pra- well, you know, maybe it's just that one thing just didn't click for you. And, you know, another thing is that people, or some people say, well, I started off at such and such and I, it took me a month and I scored whatever, 760. I guarantee that person prepared. The person was not born. Life. Like they, you know, maybe they had a, you know, engineering background or maybe they had a something that, that prepared them in some way in, in their life. But yeah, I guess you're right. It's, it's, it's going to take, you know, different areas are going to be harder for different people. But yeah. if you, and you know, if you just focus on it, like I would read some of the, um, so what's nice about target test prep is they have, laid out every single answer choice and why it's the right one is right and the wrong one is wrong, which is really helpful. And I would read some of them and I would like, this is a different language. I can't even begin to describe why, how much I don't understand this. But then if you just keep like, kind of like mulling over it, you eventually like things that are really difficult for you, like rate problems so difficult for me. By the end of the GMAT, I was getting, I you can see your enhanced score report. I was getting all the rate problems, right? Like. Yeah. So it's stuff like that. You you just, it, it, you're right. It's going to be different for everyone. You're going to have things that are really hard for you or n- really easy for you based on your background and based on the preparation you've had just in your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So some things will just click, but that's when you're learning is when it's not clicking. Exactly. You're, you're building like a whole mental framework in there, you know? So when it's not clicking, when you do that untimed practice and you go, okay, I'm going to spend as much time as I need on this question, no matter what it takes, if it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I'm going to get from beginning to end. And, you know, a key thing is not to give up on that question just because it's taking you a long time. Because, Mm -hmm. I mean, I I still do it. I'll sit, I'll put a question aside for a day, you know, and say, well, I don't quite get this and I'm not going to choose an answer. I'm not going to, I really want to get this before before I say I'm done with it, so I'll put it aside for a day, wake up the next morning and take another look. And I go, you know, this is the way to do this. Problem. So, yeah, it can take a long time to quick to uh, to click. But look what's going on. You're you're you by this using this methodology, your score increased by 300 points, you know, and 10 months is not a long time to increase your score by 300 points. By. Oh, really? If, if it's pretty quick. Time, it oh, seems really? like a long time. Nah, not nah, it's that that's right on pace. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, good. That makes me feel better. And maybe that makes everyone else listening feel better. Because, you know, it, it, for anyone, those 10 months are going to pass anyway. So just, yeah. just study, just do it. And I promise you, it'll, it'll be worth it. Okay, so now you talked about the calendar feature of the course, uh, the explanations you talked about was other aspects of the course that you found useful, and you know, how they and how they also could figure into anybody's prep. 
Yes. So I really want to highlight they, um, Marty, Jeff, Scott, they have um, weekly sessions where they break down quant and verbal. Y'all, those were invaluable because for me, if someone was, it can explain something clearly, it is a gold mine for me. I can then understand it. And it's actually hard to find a very clear teacher. Um, and so when I could go on those calls and listen in and write in the chat and stuff like that, and they could have someone explain something clearly to me, I was, I was able to then know how to do that type of content problem. And what was nice is the, the way that they do their sessions each week is kind of following the, the program. So I would do, I would finish out my, you know, sections in, um, you know, RC or whatever. And I would then go and listen to Marty then talk about reading comprehension and talk about it. So you learn it and then you can go listen to him actually explain it live. And I think just that is like really helpful. And I also want to say target test prep, you guys have a good sense of humor. I would was when I read, I read like every single word you guys wrote in like your strategy sections and in your content sections. And they're funny. And I think that enga engaged me more because I was like, okay, this is clear and it's not dry as a bone. It's really funny. So that helped. I just wanted to say. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh yeah you know and the strategy lessons are pretty useful uh it's mm -hmm. interesting because we added those to the course because we found that and whatever you know that people it's not just about learning the content you know it's so much of mastering this test involves learning the side stuff well how do i how do i stay accurate how do i practice verbal how do i take a practice test you know what do I do if I don't hit my accuracy? And all these little things add up. So really having a, folks knowing how to prepare is huge, you know? And I think that's a big takeaway here as well. The Anna kind of got the formula down. She, she used, you know, explanations to learn how to think like the test maker. She did read every sentence. You know, thoroughness is so huge. I've seen people that say, well, you know, I didn't hit my score the first time through. And then I repeated the critical reasoning lessons in a more thorough way, you know? So it's all these things add up, it's how to prepare. And it's so in and, and verbal and quant, untimed practice, like we're talking about really understanding the questions. And, and you said something about the whys, maybe you could mention that as well. You could discuss that as well, you know? About the why? The whys, like the whys of the concepts, you know? I yeah. bet people would learn from that too, because I think that's a big part of why you were able to achieve such a score increase. You said something about, when we were talking earlier, you said about the whys of things, you know, like the concepts, learning yeah. from the ground up. So both in quant and verbal, um, you know, the team at Target Test Prep have really shared in both the chapters and the test responses and, you know, answers, why something is the way that it is. And for me to be able to like fully understand why you need to know one geometry angle to then, you know, get the answer is important because I can't just, I can like, you know, I can memorize to some extent, but being able to like get the full picture on what the heck is going on on this test is so helpful. Cause if you understand why something is the way it is or why, you know, an answer is the way it is, then when you go on to that actual, the actual test and you sit down, Maybe the question doesn't look the exact same, but the concept of what you're trying to even do there is the same. Yeah, and you, and I would think you you remember it better that way as well, right? Yes, definitely. You know? It's like yeah, crafting. Yeah, that, sorry. It's crafting a story. It's it's in your head if you know the story behind why you're you know doing a certain type of like you know, what you're looking for in RC and like why it's the way that it is, like why an RC question is the way that it is, then when you go to the test, it's not as scary because you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and the thing also, any formula you learn, I found that like, okay, you can learn a rate formula or a combinations formula or, a, you know, overlapping sets and you'll just apply it so much better and remember it so much better if you understand why it works. Like, why is this the combinations formula? I personally, I have to pretty much derive it every time because I never memorized it. <laughs> you know, the combinations know. formula. But I get why it works. So I'll never forget that thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, learning things from the ground up and really understanding the why is so huge. Okay, so you've been preparing, you know. Did you take 
So what about toward the end of your prep? You took practice tests. How did that go? Or were you taking them all the way through? Yeah. At the end, after I, so the last week or two of the target test prep study plan, we'll have you take, or not, it's more than a week, actually, depends how you, you configure it, but we'll have you take um, six full length tests. And those were really helpful. And I like that they were at the end because I then could learn all the curriculum and take the actual tests at the end. And I was taking yeah. those practice tests at the end and I was, was getting, you know, I was always sticking kind of right around my score of 660 at the end, but it just, it made me feel better having those practice tests right at the end. So don't skip out on that part, you know, learn the curriculum, do all of that. But then that last thing that you can do that last push before you go into your final, you know, your official tests is those practice tests. So really focus on those two and flashcards. I love flashcards. Oh, and really? Yes. So target test prep, every time you can um, highlight your, your, your favorites, the favorite things that you've learned or throughout the thing, use a highlighting feature. And then sometimes I would um, use the highlighting feature and then I would go and I'd write my flashcard. So then the night before my GMAT, I would sit in bed with a glass of wine. No, just kidding. Just sit in bed and I would have no, no alcohol before the test. And I would go through the flashcards and that I had made of the key learnings I had that I found in target test prep. Or I would go on to target test prep and read through there. They have um, the like just the, the active reading things that I've starred and stuff like that. So um, that was what I would do before a test just to kind of keep your mind fresh, but not have a practice test right before you go into the real test. OK. And how many times did you end up taking the real test? The real test I took five times, I think. The, like, uh, really? Four. This four. I didn't even know. Yeah, I took the uh, the real test like four times. So when did you take it first? I mean, this is so this is another interesting aspect of this. I wasn't even aware of. So when did you first take the real test? I first took the real test probably in end of September or no, sorry, end of August, September. And I wanted to take the real. I knew no matter what. I had to apply round two to, to Kellogg. I just had to get this goal eventually because you can, if you're a perfectionist, you want to just keep trying, but eventually you got to, you got to submit something. So I think I, I wanted to take it four official times before I landed on my final score. And I remember I took it like September, maybe like once in September, twice in October, maybe, and then November and December, like it was like kind of right around like those kind of the last months I started in March. So it was kind of the end of the year. I wanted to take it like four times or so. So um, how did you, did you, did you, were you scoring the same the whole time? I mean. Yeah, I think like the first two, I was like 590. So okay. it was stressful, but then I think I got like, a, maybe like a 620 or so. And then I landed on my 660. And when I guys, when I press submit, I, I went to the testing centers because I needed that distinction between home and the testing center. When I went to that testing center and I pressed submit and I got my official score 660, I had such a visceral reaction. I immediately started crying tears of joy. Like I was shaking. I called the proctor over and I said, oh my gosh, is this real? Like I was so happy with that, with that 660 because to me it it showed, I you know, I made it. I kind I got to what... I, you know, wanted to do, which was a good enough score that I felt that I could submit with. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's going to be a process, but you can, you, you know, just getting that, that's that final score that you feel good about is makes it all worth it. Yeah. It's really cool. Right. Mm -hmm. I was so excited about my score. I mean, I was so excited just finishing the test that I walked away without even seeing my own score. And mm -hmm. then I walked up to the front desk and they told me my score. I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. It's just all that work pays off, you know? All the grinding and craziness and late nights and early mornings, like you said. So it's totally worth it, you know? The side benefits are there. So, I mean, this so much of this is just a perseverance story and saying, look, if I just keep going and doing good things, Good things are going to happen right exactly like if you never try you can never succeed so just keep going like just keep trying and eventually you're going to get some something you're going to get something good every person listening like something good is going to happen to you like you're going to get the score you want to get you're going to get into the school you want to get into yeah. one way or another if you don't give up if you give up 
you may not get what you wanted. So just keep going. Yeah. And I would say, add to that, that, I mean, we hear a lot, I see a lot of people saying, well, maybe I've hit my score ceiling. I don't really believe in a score ceiling. You know, mm. why would there be a ceiling? Like if you learn one more thing, once your score go up, if, yeah, you, you if you, what if you meditate and reduce test anxiety? What if you, anything, eat better, sleep better, something mm -hmm. is going to make you, your score go up. So you're not going to hit a ceiling. You can just yeah. keep driving your score up and scoring higher, you know, exactly. and, and eventually, and the beautiful thing about this is, you know, I've heard people say, well, even GMAC said, well, there was some, there's some research out there that says, uh, People score, most, most people score a little higher on their retake and then not much higher on the third. Sometimes they go down in the third and that's it. I'm like, well, who are you, where are you? Like this research is looking at what people have done, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that's what people can do. I mean, exactly. it's like a critical reasoning question. Well, most people's scores don't go up much more. Well, then they must stop studying or they're not doing something different. But they're not reading thoroughly. If your score is not going up, find something you can do, you know, because there exactly. definitely is. Exactly. You can always do something to keep improving and keep learning. You, you know, we're not meant to just stop. Like if you, uh, unless you get into school, but like, so I stop. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is like, it, it applies to everything in life. Like you can always keep working towards something and getting better. So if you, yeah, if you want to get those score improvements, keep going. Like I could have stopped in the 590s. Maybe I wouldn't be here, you know, just like just keep learning each day and you'll you'll get where you want to go. Yeah. So uh, is there anything else that you want to put out there for everybody, you know, as far as motivation or just something your personal part of your journey that we haven't covered? You know, what what else do you think people would want to know? Yeah, just a couple of things like. You know, don't get tied up in the 700 club. Don't let your confidence get too low. Like, just keep going. Keep trying. You know, it's it's good to have a goal. It's good to have something you're working towards. And for me, when I took this GMAN throughout my journey, it was, for me, a sense of purpose. I had a great sense of purpose. And so each day was better. It, it, it gave me something to do and look forward to. And I, like, well, I didn't look forward to studying, but it gave me something to work towards. So just like keep going, like don't give up, don't get discouraged. Um, and eventually, you know, you're going to go where you want to go. Like you're going to be able to do what you want to do in life. If you maintain positivity, maintain each day trying, and just like, remember that elephant, remember it's going to be in front of you. Like it's going to look impossible, like truly, truly impossible, but like just one bite at a time, just keep going. Sounds good. You too can do this. Excellent, Anna. Really great talking to you. It's great talking with everybody. Uh, do we have any questions? Is anybody, uh, does anybody have any particular questions for Anna at this point uh, about her prep, about how she used a target test prep course? Do you have questions for me before we go? Because this is all pretty neat. Just check in. Okay, cool. Okay, great, y'all. It's been fun, and I really appreciate your coming out. It's so interesting hearing what worked for you, the perseverance, and just the steps and everything, and it all adds up. So congratulations. We appreciate your coming out. Have a great rest of your day, y'all. Take care. Thanks, everyone, and good luck. Bye. Bye.